Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. Uh, one question I got recently was just how to decide with add-ons when to use um, a list return type or a single return type. And so it really is going to depend on the relationships in your database uh, to determine which one you want to use. So let's go ahead and go through a few examples here on my screen and hopefully things will start to make a little more sense and be a little clearer. So first of all, we see we have three tables here. Right now, I just wanna focus on the user table and the location table. You can see the location table has three cities and the user table has a number of users and this location ID. So what we're saying here is that each user can belong to one location, right? You can only be in one place at once, okay? So let's go ahead to the API now and let's do an add-on where we're pulling our user records and we wanna see the location where they're at. So I'm just gonna to jump to my CRUD API endpoints here and see my user endpoint. And when I click on the query all records and go to the output tab, here we can add an add-on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through this, click add-on button, create new add-on. I'm gonna add the location table to my response because I'm getting my user tables and here, I get to choose how do I want to return the data. Here's that single or list option. Obviously there's count, exist, and aggregate, but let's just focus on these top two for the sake of this video. So remember, a user only belongs to one location. So we can just do a single item in this case, okay? So I'm just gonna hit single item. We'll map that uh, location underscore ID from the user table to the location dot ID of that location table. Hit next, create add-on. You can see that mapping. Let's go ahead and hit done. And here you can see that location will be added on. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And now let's just simply run that. And here you can see I get all my user records back and I'm adding on basically the location information that they belong to. So this location ID from my user table, which is just that integer that references the location table, you can see here is being decorated with this single object uh, of the location information where they belong. Now you'll notice that some users belong to the same location and that's perfectly okay. So if we wanna reverse this and then pull our location information and see all the users at the location, well, let's go ahead and do that because now that's an opportunity to use a list return type. So I'm gonna go into location here, go into my query all records and let's go into the output. And here I'm gonna do the add-on. And next we want to add on our user table because now we're gonna get our location as the parent uh, object here. So let's do user. And we'll do a list of items here. And step three, just how do we wanna connect those tables? We'll connect it on the user.locationID because that's the relationship here. Hit next, we can go ahead and leave that name. And we'll see the response here. So now you'll see, because I chose list, we have these array brackets or these flat brackets outside of our object or curly brackets, okay? So that's how you can tell when it's a list versus single. A single would just have the curly brackets. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And now when we go ahead and run this, you can see, here's my first city, Los Angeles, and we have our list or array of each user that belongs to that location. You see we have Chris and Mary, and you can even close uh, or, yeah, basically close that and you can see the count of that list. Chicago, same thing. So there is a list of our user objects for each location, okay? So let's go back to the database. And next up, let's focus on just the user table and projects table, okay? So here in my projects table, you can see I have these different projects and it looks like there are, is a team of users for each project. And some users are on multiple projects. So here we can have many users to many different projects. Okay, so let's go into the projects table next. I'm just gonna jump, do a little shortcut here, go to related API endpoints and go into projects. And I'm just gonna click on this query all records Let's go to the output tab. So now we're pulling our projects, but we wanna see what users are, say, working on this project, right? So because we have that list of user IDs, we can actually do
do the add-on right here inside this array where it's asking for. So I'm going to just click into here. And let me first show you what the response looks like without the add-on real quick. So as you can see, we have this array of all of the user IDs. So when we do the add-on inside, we can basically transform those IDs into the actual objects that they belong to. And I'll show you how. So let's go ahead and create a new add-on. And I'm going to do the user. And so this is a little tricky, right? So we already have a list, right? And so what do we want to pull for the users? So let's say we did a list of items, right? And we map this on the user ID because it's projects user ID. We'll hit create add-on. So you can see this is going to be a list, right? But what this will do is this is going to put a list in a list in a list, right? So when I run this, I'll explain it a little more. So what we have here is we have our user IDs. There's three, but each one is returning a list of just one. Now that can make the data a little difficult to work with sometimes. What we actually want is just a list of our three user objects, not a list of three lists. So what some people don't know is in the library, we can customize add-ons. So let's go ahead and just change that. I'm going to click on that user add-on, go into my query all records, go to the output tab, and let's just change that to a single return type now. So now you see those flat brackets went away and we just have our curly brackets. So we're just returning a single item. And then let's just jump back to that endpoint now. So now when I run this, we should have a much nicer formatted list of our user objects. You can see each user object is uh, just has the flat bracket. So our list of three is three user objects, not three lists of single list. Okay. Now let's go about it um, the opposite way, right? Let's say we want to pull the user table and see what projects they're working on. Okay, so this one can be a little tricky, but it's definitely a very good one to show. So let's jump back into this user endpoint, which we've used earlier. And with add-ons, we can do them recursively. So I could keep this location add-on and now do the projects add-on by selecting this one for this to the left, because that's for my user object. But I'm just going to remove this location one just to keep things more focused on the example we're doing right now. So let's go ahead and do this projects add-on. So if I go create new add-on and do projects. So remember a user uh, can be working on multiple projects. So we're going to do a list here, but you'll notice something here. The only option for my mapping is this projects ID. However, we know that uh, in the user table, there is no reference to the projects ID. So if I actually do select that, hit create add-on, well, you'll notice in the user table, we don't have anything to actually map it to. So if I try to do that and run this add on, we actually won't get anything back. Why is that? So let's jump back over here into this add ons table or the add ons page of the library. Rather, let's click on that projects add on I just created. So if you think about it, what we're doing in this query is we're mapping the projects ID. Um, to the input projects ID. However, what we actually want to do, let's delete this input. We can add a new input in here. We want to see what users are in the array that's on the projects table of that user's ID list, right? So let's look at that in our custom query here. So let me delete this and I'll add a new one. So we want to see, remember, what user ID, what single user ID is in, so we want to use this in operator, the list of our user IDs. So this in operator is always used in arrays when you're comparing a single um, item of that array that is contained inside of it. So you want to use this in one. Okay. So we can just do that. You can build custom add ons just like this um, from the add on page. Let me just go ahead and hit save. Um, and let's go back to that endpoint now. And it was user. 
So the add-on should still be mapped up, but let's just double check here how this is mapped now. So you can see it automatically detected the user ID goes to the ID of the user table. So now when we actually run this, we'll get a nice uh, list of what projects every user is on. So it looks like Shannon is just on one project. That's okay. We have Michael here. It looks like he has two different projects. And I know this second array of user IDs is a little confusing there, but let me just minimize that. You can see project 10, project ABC for Michael, and we can keep going down. We see Dan's on project 10 and project XYZ. So there you go, just a few things to hopefully clear that up. Um, couple different types of relationships here. Um, of course, you can always go back and customize the add-on to change the return type if you realized you messed up. Uh, just go to that library page and select add-ons. So, Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Um, Add-ons is a super powerful tool um, and they're fully customizable, which is awesome. So if this video was helpful, please subscribe to our channel and like it. Uh, it just helps other people find this content and thank you for watching.